before we commence our load combination, your best approach is to recheck all the loads you have applied on your structure to ensure that they are correct. When you are designing high-rise structures such as these, 4, 5, 6, 12-story structures, you load from the roof, the roof structure, you, roll, you load the roof beams, you transfer the load from the roof structure to the roof beams, you then load the subsiding floor, you, you load the dead load, the imposed load on the slab, transfer it to the beams, and you go in the same manner. When you carry out your analysis, typically start will transfer the load from the adjoining beams to the columns. Either the columns is an axial loaded column, that's to say the corresponding distances between the transverse members framing into the, into the columns are approximately of the same dimensions or not different from, uh, they don't differ by 15% of the longer span. That implies that the column is collecting just axial load, that's all referred to as axial loaded columns. Then in the axial loaded columns are columns that are framed in such a way that two spans of adjoining beams, like what you have on this column, this is a very typical example of the axial loaded column, two spans are approximately the same, I have not looked at this dimension, but they look approximately the same from inspection, and then you have this adjacent orthogonal span of being framing into that column, causing uniaxial predominant moment about that column. So the column is carrying axial forces from this beam and uniaxial bending moment. The moment from that beam and that beam will typically cancel out once you multiply by the corresponding structural influence stiffness coefficient. So this is a typical example of a uniaxial loaded column. And then you also have biaxial loaded column where the columns are taking both axial loads and then doubly moment about two predominant um, um, axis, about the principal axis of the, the columns cross-section. So, you know, the design of the columns, the load will be transferred from the beams, where start plots the bending moment diagram, it transfers those loads, you know, from st typical structural analysis of highly indeterminate structural frames such as this, it will transfer the moments and the associated axial load to the columns and then to design it. So, one of the things you need to check is to ensure, recheck before you do your load combinations, that all your loads that you have applied on the various floors are correct. So let me just do a very quick recheck. Remember that we started from loading the self weight. This is the self weight of the entire structure. If I take us back to what we've been doing, the first thing is to is for you to develop your calculation sheets. At the roof level, we calculate the self weight of the roof slab, 100 millimeter thick, 2.4. Specific of concrete times the thickness of the slab gives you that three layer of felting we calculated that and extracted the weight of felting from the BS code VX648 provides that provision imposed load on the roof the code made it clear that once you have continuous access to the roof only for maintenance and not continuous access once you have periodical access for maintenance to the roof your imposed load depending on the roof pitch angle you know, should be between 0 0.6 and 0 0.75 kilometer per meter square. So we use the upper bound. is on BS 6399 per 3. And then, you know, the roof beams looked at that, the imposed loads, and then the environmental loads. So let's check and make sure that these loads are correctly applied. So this is the self-weight. Once you specify the self-weight generator, once you specify the direction in which you want start to calculate the self-weight and assign to the corresponding members, Start will use the specific weight of the material, be it concrete, aluminium, timber, whatever material which you have assigned to your structural entity. Remember this is a software, it's garbage in, garbage out. If you specify the wrong material property, you will get the wrong loading results because it's a, it's a, it's a program that was developed via, you know, simple structural engineering principles. So the, the self-weight of each of the members is is dependent is a factor or is a function of the specific weight of each modeled entity so if you specify the wrong specific weights specific of, of a different material you will get wrong results in your analysis so you have to be very careful careful you check your geometry always go to materials and make sure look at all the materials that have has that are predefined you can see that all our materials identified as concrete we have steel, I even defined block work. You, you are at liberty to also define your own, create your own material. That's how excellent application is. Excellent is a very, very 
um, complicated structure analysis application, you can define your own user-defined material, either autotrophic and isotropic material. You create them, specify the property, the isotropic properties that is in, in the corresponding um, plane, elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio, density, and so on, and then start to create that material, and then you can assign the material to the entity. So let's go back to our load uh, definition. So we have applied the self weight of the entire structure. That is correct. The roofs slab dead load on the roof beams. So in our assumptions, recall that we assumed that. Let's look at the roof level first of all, so that we um, just make sure that we are. So we have assumed that all the corresponding slab panels are two-way in nature. In a more precise analysis, you would establish the corresponding one-way slab by determining the aspect ratio. If the ratio of the length to width of the panel is greater than two, the predominant bending is in one direction and that slab panel is identified as a one-way slab panel because the bending is predominantly in one way. Okay, and then if the and then if it's in one way bending, the loads are transferred to the adjacent beam, okay, parallel to the one way direction of span. However, if the aspect ratio, that's the ratio of the length to width, if it's less than or equals to two, that slab panel is defined as a two way slab panel. So it bends in two directions, and then yield line formation reforms at the boundaries of the supports as well as commence, commences at the intersection between the boundary of supports, as like you can see, is what is used in, the, in determining the loads that will be transferred to the corresponding beams. So we have, you know, so how did we do this again? Remember that what you do usually is to use a floor load. You define the region occupied by the corresponding panel in space. The region is defined by the corresponding minimum and maximum coordinates of the X, Y, and Z of each of the boundary points for the slab panels. Once you define it in slab in stad, you define the minimum and maximum y value x and z. Stad would utilize the pressure load you have specified and then calculate the corresponding yield line and corresponding trapezoidal or uniformly varying distributed load. So it could be a combination of a trapezoidal or triangular load in compliance with the code requirements also as is defined clearly in real null stable okay so i specified these things clearly and i mentioned how these loads are transferred in line with the theory of yield lines so these are the loads that are transferred to the corresponding beams based on the boundary condition if it is fixed support if it is simply support or if it has no supports whatsoever The next thing we looked at is beam finish. When you go back to the architectural design, this is the first to third floor plan. When you look at the architectural design, you obviously know that on the roof level we would have some parapets. You know, once we cast the slab, there will be some finishes that will be applied over the beam over the beams okay you cast the slab you might screed and then you can apply um the felting that is to be applied and some other finishes the client might decide to also apply some one inch thick tiles and so on so finishes associated with these you need to calculate and estimate these these loads and apply it on your structure so we apply one kilometer per meter to cater for beam finishes that we applied on on the entire beams 